So, brown is the new red. Okay, brown is the new red. Our speaker, David Hernandez, uh, was born in Lincoln Heights, Los Angeles area. Uh, after he graduated from high school, he joined the United States Navy, and he is a Vietnam veteran. David has also been a candidate for numerous offices. I think the fact that you're here now means uh, you weren't successful yet. Or, uh, you can, well, you can elaborate on that. Uh, he also served as executive director of the San Fernando Valley Chamber of Commerce for a number of years. Uh, David is currently the organizer and president of the California Hispanic Republican Club and the Los Angeles chapter. And one great thing about David is he hosts a weekly radio show uh, 9 p.m. on KRLA on Sunday nights. Uh, a great man who's doing great things, bringing in uh, all sorts of people that haven't been Republicans to become Republicans to vote conservative. Let's welcome Mr. David Hernandez. Come on, you can do better than that. Thank you. Yeah. When do you want me to be quiet? Uh, never. Never, <laughs> never, never. All right, well, 15 minutes, okay. Uh, good afternoon, and uh, what, are, uh, what a pleasure it is to be here. You know, we had some, some great speakers, and, you know, as dire as the situation uh, appears, it's vital that we have that information when we talk to people. Because most people have never heard what you heard this morning. They do not know how much danger they are in. They do not know how much danger their children are in. Uh, but one of the things that kind of stuck out, especially in listening to Trevor and where the, the, the left is uh, focusing their resources, it's clear they've taken California for granted. They figure this is sewed up. They have California lock, stock, and barrel. Uh, the uh, groups like Lane, Los Angeles Alliance for a New Economy, the LA County Federation of Labor, uh, Liberty Hill, all these different groups that have these great little names that have infiltrated every level of governance here in California and LA County and are being allocated all of your tax dollars and resources to further their agenda. They think they don't have to worry, 55 or 54 electoral votes automatically gonna go to Kamala Harris. So we don't have to worry about you. <laughs> you know, being taken for granted is gonna be, and is one of our biggest assets. Uh, recently I had a writer from the LA Times contacted me and his parents were communists and he's a writer for the LA Times. He wanted to, you know, hear about this Hispanic Republican Club. And uh, he wanted to hear about it because he had been hearing things about it. And he was getting concerned. And his concern was, is that those in elected office and in power in California weren't concerned about it. And that they were taking the Hispanic vote for granted. And he wanted to come and prove that we were really not worth worrying about. So he came to my office and spent a couple hours there. And then we invited him to Salem Radio, to our studio in Glendale, where he spent two hours in disbelief because the show right before us had Michelle Martinez, Raul Reese, had uh, Eric Chin and a number of different people. That was the show before us. And then we came in, and all of a sudden we had Claudia, who ran for state senate in, in uh, the Eagle Rock area. All the, the room was filled with Hispanic Republicans. It was, it was in disbelief. And, uh, you know, that's where we are right now. Now, when we look at California, and you know, I've been doing this since 2002. 
Prior to that, I was like most people. I never got involved in politics. I had a family, I had a house, I had a business, I had kids, softball, t-ball, all these different things. I was busy, that's what we do. And besides, there are people, you know, good people who get elected to office to look out for our best interest, right? So why, why worry about it? Why even think about it? So I dropped my wife off at her Encino Oak uh, Republican Women's Group because they were making phone calls for Bush. That was my total involvement in politics. And when I got home, my neighbor who was 94 said, David, you know, where you, what were you, you know, what's going on? I told him where I was coming from. And he stopped and thought, how come there's never a Republican to vote for for Congress where we live? That was in 2002. I was so uninvolved that I didn't even realize that that was taking place. And so I started asking around, and what I was told was, why bother, you can't win. And based on that flawed philosophy, that is what has been governing the Republican Party in the state of California in, for the past uh, couple of decades. And so I don't know about you, but I love Norwalk. Because Norwalk is where the county recorder's office is located. This, this becomes a very popular city uh, two times during the year. When the filing period opens and when they start counting the votes. You know, this is a very popular city. And uh, so... I don't know about any of you, so I knew where the, where the county recorder's office was. So I walked into the county recorder's office and said, you know what some of the people in this room did, Raul did it, I'm sure Paul Jones did it over there. They walked in there and said, what do we have to do to run for office? Do I have to have somebody's permission? Do I have to have a certain degree? Do I have to be anointed by a certain uh, party uh, electeds or officials or class or special interest group? Who's going to tell me whether or not I can run for office? And they just said there's a clipboard over there on the counter. It's triple space. Fill out two pages. And you're in. Wow. What other country on the planet is that opportunity available? And so I filled it out, and back then it was a closed primary, uh, thanks to Arnold Schwarzenegger and uh, some of the other Republicans back then that opened up this uh, top two system. You had to be a Republican in order to sign a Republican not candidate's nomination papers or pay a filing fee of $1,500. I didn't have $1,500, but I could go out and I could collect signatures from voters to get on the ballot. So I set up a little table at the farmer's market in Studio City. <laughs> Everyone was there getting their, you know, their kale and their uh, gluten-free food and uh, all of that stuff. And so I had a couple of friends that were Democrats that really liked me, and they said, wow, we've never ever met anybody who's run for public office. We'll help you collect signatures. <laughs> so as those shoppers came by, um, about an hour later, my friends came back in tears. And I was like, what's wrong? It's like, David, we love you. But these people are vicious. <laughs> Because you had to be a registered Republican to sign my papers. So their first question was, excuse me, are you a registered Republican? <laughs> you could have asked them anything else, no matter how vile, and you would have gone, yeah, your response wouldn't be so bad. And so I figured that's it. You know, at least I tried. And um, I later got a call from a uh, Republican club, and they said, hey, we see that you filled out your paperwork to run for Congress. How's that going? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> and, you know, they said, well, unless you're crazy, 
We'll pay your filing fee, and you'll get on the ballot. I should have, that should have been a red flag. Anybody that's willing to pay a filing fee to a stranger to get on the ballot, something must be wrong. <laughs> so they paid my filing fee, and in 2002, I was the Republican nominee for Congress in District 22. And they were right, I didn't win. <laughs> but what I did start was a journey that has taken me throughout the state of California, meeting people like the people in this room. So I know, without a shadow of a doubt, this state is not lost. Because you exist everywhere. And so, at that time, Senator Jim Brulte was still in office. And so after the uh, primary, because we had primaries back then, uh, they got all the candidates together, you know, and all these, we got new can, you know, Paul's a new candidate, we always won before, but uh, they got all the new candidates together for the big talk, and they said, you know, congratulations, we're really happy you're running as Republican, um, but don't expect any help from us, because you're running in races that we can't win and don't make a difference. But if you do win, then you will do what our friends in the third house, meaning the lobbyists, will tell you to do, or we will run somebody against you next time. And I thought, well, this was my idea, so this, who am I to question? And so they kept their word, they didn't help. Uh, but what they did ask was that we commit to running a second time. Because the first time you're going to gain information and knowledge, and you're going to develop relationships that are very valuable. So in 2004, I ran again and paid my own filing fee this time. And uh, after the primary, they had the big meeting of all the new candidates. And uh, so there we were, everybody's all excited. You know, you, you won your primary, but you're the only one on the ballot as a Republican in your primary. So you automatically won. And so a different guy comes out and starts with the talk. You know, congratulations, you're running as Republicans, but don't expect any help from us. And as he started to say it, I said, wait a minute. Every person in this room is taking time away from their family, away from their jobs, away from their children, away from all the things that are important and the reason that they are running. We're going to take enough crap from the opposition that not only do we not deserve it from you, we are not going to tolerate it from you. And you can the eyes of those candidates get really big. <laughs> and I looked around. They're not going to help us anyway. And the guy that was going to give the talk backed up. And he apologized. He said, you're right. You see, when someone runs for office, I don't ask them whether or not they're going to win it. I ask them whether or not is it going to make a difference. Believe me, everyone running for office makes a difference. Because you are going to be talking to people who will never, ever have an opportunity to talk policy and issues about individuals. You are the face of the Republican Party. And so I ran for office a few times. Uh, Somebody asked me, David, you're kind of like the perennial candidate. You're running a Congress a couple of times, community college board, uh, county supervisor, uh, mayor of Los Angeles. You know, how many times have you actually run for office? And I said, well, one less than Richard Nixon, and one more than Abraham Lincoln. <laughs> But in the end, they were both called Mr. President because they didn't give up. That's right. This politics is not a sprint. You 
think the left, you think the Chinese got into this position overnight? No. You know, talk about long-range goals. Yeah. They stuck to it. And so the last time I ran was in 2018 when I ran for lieutenant governor of California. And, you know, as a grassroots candidate, driving up and down Highway 5 and 99, stopping at all the little ranch towns and the little farming communities, you know, driving six hours to speak for 15 minutes. Do you know how appreciative those people were? Those little towns like Exeter and going up and down that... Just they couldn't believe that I would drive that car that long to speak for 15 minutes. So when someone starts talking to me about all oh, those racist white uh, farmers and ranchers up and down in Northern California, and I ask them, have you ever been there? <laughs> have you ever sat down and talked to them? I said, they were some of the most supportive, yeah. the most generous, the most encouraging people I've ever met. Yeah. That's why I know this state is not lost. But they're praying for us. They're praying for us because Los Angeles County, yeah. you know, Norwalk is one of 88 cities in Los Angeles County. We have over, we have 1,012,000 registered Republicans in LA County. We should be winning every single race. Yes. But instead, over 50% of Republicans aren't voting. That is not the Democrats' fault. That's their strategy. Because I attended a candidate's uh, a, uh, the LA Times at USC put on a forum us as to how to, get, how to get more people to vote. And so I went there and they had uh, Sean Steele, who was a former uh, chair of the California Republican Party. He was one of the panelists. They had an editorial writer for the LA Times and they had Gary South. Gary South was Gray Davidson's campaign manager. And the question was, how do you get more people out to vote? Uh, Sean Seal said, well, the candidates have to look like their constituents. The guy from the Times says, well, no, it's got to be issues. Issues are going to be the driving force. Gary South starts laughing, and they look at him. And he goes, why do you want to get more people out to vote? You don't want angry, informed people going to the polls. That's the last thing you want. You want them not to vote and make them believe it is their idea that they're not going to vote because they don't trust the system or they're going to protest. They succeeded. This last March, who was it? 33% voter turnout? They succeeded, but they haven't won. And so following that 2018 election, I activated my Los Angeles Hispanic Republican Club. Now, let's, I've never had a hyphen behind my name. You know, I've always been an American. That's it, an American. But in 2004, when I ran for Congress, I joined the Republican Jewish Coalition. Because it, it really puzzled me. And I started going to their events. And believe me, they were very, they were very well organized. And um, they were working on reaching other individuals in the Jewish community to let them know, hey, not only is it not okay to be a Republican, it's preferable to be a Republican. And so I looked at the voter rolls, and I was shocked as to how many Hispanics were already registered Republicans. Because up in, and now I had been involved in politics for 16 years at that time. And I, every meeting that I go to is, how do you get the Hispanic vote? The Hispanic vote is the future. What issues are important to Hispanics? And I'm sitting in those meetings, and it's usually a non-Hispanic saying, asking those questions. By the way, <laughs> as you can tell, I, I, once in a while I stir the pot a little bit. And so I'm at one of those meetings at Gallup and Ford in the Valley, and uh, the room was you know, a little bit fuller than this, and the guy's giving the talk about talk, you know, outreach to Hispanics. And I, I, I raise my hand and I go, excuse me, when you look at me, what do you see? And he could tell it's going to be a trick question. <laughs> and so I said, you know, if you don't see an American, you could be a racist. 
And I said, just kidding. <laughs> Why would you think that clean, safe neighborhoods, quality education, the opportunity to work and prosper are any different from the Hispanic community, the Chinese community, the Armenian community, the Italian community? Why would you think our issues are any different? And that resonated. And so in 2018, I set out, five minutes? Two minutes. In 2018, I set out to make sure that every race in Los Angeles County had a Republican yeah. running. And so I started the program, called Leave No Assembly District Behind. We, had, we ran ads on Salem Radio. We paid filing fees. We kept collected signatures. And we got at least 13 candidates on those ballots. Yeah. We've continued that every year since. Uh, this election cycle, there's only two races in Los Angeles County that do not have every Republican in the race. Wow. And so from that ad campaign, I was able to garner support from a sponsor. We've been on the on Salem Radio every Saturday night at 9 p.m. We're, we're finishing up our fourth year. We've branched out not only to different Republican groups, but with my friend Luis, and uh, his counterpart, uh, Emilio, uh, their daughters, uh, Ellie, who, who was pre-registered, and her Brenda was talking about uh, pre-registration in high school. She pre-registered as a Republican at 16. And she and, and Tara, who was 24, they started a 180 Gen Z group where they, have, they are reaching millions and millions of young people using the social media of the left. And there are... We're doing incredible things. And so, thank you for all that you're doing. You know, I'm a, like I said, I'm a Vietnam veteran. My friend Paul Jones, who is running for state assembly, not able to leave this area, is, is not only a Vietnam veteran, but a Purple Heart recipient. And there's Donna, his wife, who is really standing uh, behind him. Yeah. Believe me, candidates, your families make a lot of sacrifices. Yeah. And so we really want to, you know, not only acknowledge the candidates, but their families. And so, you know, tonight we're lined up. Uh, we have a great show. Uh, we're on from 9 to 11 until the, till the, end, till the election. Uh, we're always looking for sponsorships for our second hour. It's called the Hour of Candidates. And any candidate, Brenda, we had candidates from Santa Ana calling in, from school boards, from all over. Uh, so thank you all for all the things that you do, and remember, this is far from over. Amen. Thank you. Amen.